Good evening. Greetings from Texas. I'm Mo Jamshidi from the University of Texas in San Antonio. I was asked to give a short uh, account of my 49 years of knowing and uh, more recent years collaborating closely with both Faye and Lotfi Zadeh. I first met Lotfi 49 years ago as a, when I was a graduate student at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. I went to Berkeley uh, along with some friends and uh, learned about Lotfi. At the time, he was chair of the Department of Electrical Engineering and, Com and Computer Science at Berkeley. Lotfi was born in 1921, February 6th, in Baku, Azerbaijan, from a Azeri father from Ardebil, and a Russian mother from Moscow. Her mother was a pediatrician, and his, her, his mother was a pediatrician, and his father was both a, a merchant as well as a representative of the, uh, at the time, Iranian newspaper called Iran. At the age of 10, they decided to immigrate back uh, for his father and the family to Iran, and they resided in Tehran. Almost uh, at the same time, Faye's parents, uh, who were native of Latvia and was Jewish ethnicity, were trying to get away from, from the uh, European uh, um, issues and the problems of the, of the uh, Hitler's era, and they decided to either go to Australia or to Iran, where they are very friendly, they were known to be friendly with Jewish uh, and coexisting with, with Jewish common, uh, populations. So uh, when Faye's younger sister was sick, they found out there is a Russian-speaking pediatrician in town, uh, Lotfi's mother, and they went there, and the two families got to know each other. And uh, Lotfi was around 20, 25 years old. He was just graduated from uh, from the Anishkade Fanni, uh, a school of engineering in the University of Tehran. He was in the third class of of the uh, of this electrical engineering. As I recalled, he used to say that there were only three people in the whole class. And Lotfi uh, was very fluent in English even early, and he learned not only Farsi, but he also learned uh, English, and to the best of my knowledge, he, he never really speak much of Azari. And he was working with the U.S. Army during World War II in Tehran, and by 1944, up to a couple of years after his graduation, he uh, received a permanent residency from uh, United States and uh, left for Iran or for for U.S. rather uh, in, on the boat. And by 19, he attended MIT for his master's degree. And later on, his father joined them in New York and mother. And because of that, he was a sort of responsible to help them with, uh, with their living expenses. So he moved from MIT to Columbia University, which at the time was basically the center of the gravity of control and system engineering research in America. And he got his PhD, and at the same time, he acted as an instructor, so he would get additional funding to support his family. On March 20th, 1946, on the, the night of the Nowruz Persian New Year, they got married in New York. Very simple ceremony. And uh, Lotfi, as we all know, has always been uh, thinking outside the, the bound and outside the, the box. He always had a lot of ideas, a lot of uh, really uh, uh, vision that uh, we are yet to really realize them even after his passing. But in uh, 1992, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, I honored Lotfi uh, through my uh, conference, World Automation Congress, 
there are a lot of scientists around the world from Stanford, from Washington, from New York, they all attended that meeting in honoring him. And uh, we, that was the first time that I coined and dubbed the phrase the father of fuzzy logic. And a couple of, a few years later, uh, when Lotfi and Faye, myself and my wife Gila, and our joint friend, uh, Galen and Jale Etemad, we had a long weekend together, the, the three couples at Lake Tahoe in Nevada. We decided that the Faye should be writing a book on her uh, reflection of his, her life uh, and travels with uh, Father of Fuzzy Logic. That was the title of the book. The book which is shown here will soon be uh, translated, would be put into electronic form and it will become an e-book for the whole world to read and download it. Uh, although Lotfi was an excellent, uh, excellent uh, really scientist, his time was, uh, was not enough for, to take care of and uh, spend more time with his family. And Faye was uh, somewhat close to me in the sense that she always used to thank me immensely for opening the door of publishing this book so that the world would know that uh, at the time, 50 years of marriage together, they, uh, she went through a lot to basically uh, uh, got to where they are. It's a saying that behind, behind every successful scientist and man, there is a woman, but I would add adjective of sometimes suffering you, uh, woman. So uh, in any case, uh, Lotfi uh, was a unique person, a very, very uh, visionary, and some of the, uh, uh, his quotes that I would like to repeat is uh, worth noting, some of them becoming humorous. He used to say that when he was debating with other people and didn't really like what is going on, he would say, quote unquote, I agree entirely with everything that you did not say. And he was being in the, in the systems and circuits and electrical uh, systems uh, community before he published the Fuzzy Set paper in 1965. He was a really a legend in system and controls and system theory and circuit theory, even before that fuzzy set paper. I said that in a, in a Persian community where we traveled together to Houston uh, for another award ceremony for him. And he was therefore being criticized immensely by a lot of controls and system engineering people, including IEEE, and he used to say, quote unquote, if you feel offended by what you are told, respond by saying, I will take it as a compliment. And he was really taken. And he used to follow that quote and say, I have a thick skin, I can take it. And he did. When he uh, was in charge of the electrical engineering and computer science department at UC Berkeley, which happened to be the only administrative job he ever uh, really uh, took on, he was somewhat frustrated and he would say the following about that job, to survive in this job, you have to kill yourself. So in, back in 1990, before I honored him in Santa Fe, I called Lotfi and I said, Lotfi, we have a meeting in at Vancouver, British Columbia, and I would love to have you there as a keynote. He said, no, I'm too busy, I have to go to Japan. I said, Lotfi, I'll set the, your session in the airport of Vancouver, you come there. He knew I was you know, insistent, so he did come. Three months before that, there was an article, short article at, in Time magazine about fuzzy logic and fuzzy chips, and uh, he was uh, basically introduced as a Russian mathematician quote unquote. And that didn't go well with a lot of other people. So I uh, introduced him basically as 
that he was born in Baku, so he could be Azari. He, his mother was Russian, he could be Russian. He moved to um, uh, Iran. His father was Persian, he had a Persian passport. He moved to America, became uh, American citizen. So he could be a citizen of all of those countries. And more recently, uh, because of the advent of fuzzy chips in Japan, every other week he's in Japan. So now Japanese may be claiming him. So in regard to nationality, he was very specific. He said, I have lived and grown in several, uh, 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 several cultures in Azerbaijan, in Russia, USSR, in Iran, in US, and I'm very comfortable with respect to my nationality being a citizen of the world. So we need to be careful about attaching nationality to him. So my conclusion is, that his nationality is fuzzy. He could have a membership value of 0.5 Iranian, 0.3 Russian, 0.1 Azari, 0.1 American, and so forth and so on. So uh, in any case, I want to thank you again for this opportunity to giving me to be with you in, in terms of this video. As uh, Mr. Gayur knows, I'm also lecturing tonight uh, on Persian science, Persian scientists and poetry, and also, like you folks, honoring uh, in memory of Lotfi Zadeh and Maryam Rezakhani. Thank you so much.